Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is a little bit after 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It's time for another live stream. Today is Tuesday, April 4th. It's 4 4 23. I don't know what that means, but I just like it when the numbers repeat or if there's a pattern, you know. So I feel like that's that's gonna be a good day. Um, everyone that's listening on the podcast and the audio only version. Hopefully you're having a good run today, or hopefully your uh, commute is going well. You know, when that person cuts you off, just be extra nice. You know, maybe they're having a rough day. Maybe they don't know it's 4-4. Maybe they just think it's an April day, and they don't realize that it's a lucky day, and you should be nice to people. So, you know, give them, cut them a little slack. That's what we could do. And everyone watching this on YouTube later, after the fact, welcome to you guys as well. Hopefully you're having a good day. And uh, hopefully you did not get caught in some storms. Today... I think we're under a thunderstorm. There's like warning, watch warning advisory, something like that, right? I'm not sure which ones, none, neither of them sound more impending than the other, but we're under something like that. At the end of my run, there was a little bit of lightning and thunder that was very close by, came out of kind of nowhere. I mean, it had been overcast the entire time, but then all of a sudden, like lots of lightning. Um, and then it's just been, the lights have been flickering here at the house. So hopefully we won't lose power. We won't lose the live stream, but. You know, if I'm gone for a long time, all of a sudden, it's because the power went out and I might not be able to get it back. So just just in case, you know, if it ends abruptly or than normal, that's the reason why. All right. Let's see who we got here in the live stream today. MRM says, congrats on the Sage Candidate shout out. Yeah, that was really exciting to see um, uh, on uh, YouTube shorts is where I saw. I don't know if he put it on Instagram, too, but I saw on YouTube shorts. Uh, he, uh, Sage said he was doing a Kapuzi style uh video about uh the rocket x2 so i thought that was very very flattering and um just a, a very strange surreal kind of thing i've been following sage for years and um i remember years ago for halloween i did a uh sage kennedy style review of the hoka clifton one re-release which was several years ago now so that's kind of how far back uh, I've been watching Sage, so uh, very, very flattering for someone who's been in the game for a long time and has been making great content for a long time to uh, to give me some recognition like that. So that, that made my day, and I appreciate that very much. Um, all right, Frank says, uh, Sage didn't quite pull it off, though, uh, especially compared to the vid this morning, which just looked just spectacular. Well, thank you. Thank you. Very much. I thought he did. I thought Sage did a great job, um, but I appreciate uh, the thoughts, uh, Frank. Today's video this morning, it went out. I know I said I was going to put it out yesterday, but I didn't finish it until like 10 o'clock at night. And I'm like, well, most of the runners are going to be in bed already. And then uh, it's a little on the early side for everyone in the UK. So I was like, you know what? I'll just set it to go up a little extra early in the morning. And so the uh, Washington, D.C., the Runner's Weekend video went out this morning, and I thought it turned out pretty good. You know, I was worried that it was going to be kind of like a little bit on the light side, like not a lot of stuff. And I was like, you know, I should have gone to a museum or something, and I probably should have. But, um, yeah, I ended, up, I ended up being pretty happy with how it turned out. So I hope you guys enjoy it if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, Sean says, hey, everyone. Mile repeats this morning, kept it under control, and no Masters world records were broken. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. We're, we're, we're um, getting close to race day, so, you know, don't want to do anything too crazy. Uh, Eliza says, hi, co-fam. It's been a bit and catching up. Congrats on the Cherry Blossom run. I need to watch the video, and I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, hopefully hopefully uh, you will enjoy it. Calvin says he has a seven times strides today coming up. Nice. Um. I think I'm going to do strides tomorrow. I just did a regular run today. I think I'm going to do some strides tomorrow. I did my first run in the On Cloud Surfer. It's a pretty good shoe. I like it. It has no speed board. And as I would have imagined or anticipated, I like it more because it doesn't have that speed board. I feel like I'm feeling some of those clouds. It feels like a shoe that rolls really well, but I have I didn't run too fast in it, although there's some pop. Oh, I just heard some thunder. I did. I did run through some puddles, um, and you know you, you don't want to linger through those. So like I picked up the pace a little bit to get through those, and I'm like, ooh, are these clouds gonna help when I want to get up on my toes? So you know, so far feeling really good about that shoe. I like it a lot. It when I look at it, I'm like, this looks like a big puffy cushioned shoe that I think will be fun to walk around in, but I don't know how much I want to run in it. When you start running in it, it doesn't feel like that. It just feels like a nice shoe that kind of like, I feel like it's very angled, 
you know, like some shoes like have like very aggressive rockers on the front and the back. I feel that, but in a good way. I'm rolling through in a nice way. I'm not slapping the ground. I'm, I'm liking it so far. I'm liking it so far. First run was really good. Um, all right. Jay-Z says, hey, everyone. Mega Heat sounds mega bad. Hope they're wrong. Um, I'm guessing you guys are talking about... Um, uh, talking about the weather for boston people have been sending me like uh snapshots of the weather forecast already uh, i got one on while i was on my run today but i had you know i didn't have my phone with me and i had my apple watch and um so i'm listening to uh des Lindzen's audiobook it came out today so i started listening to that and then all of a sudden like siri starts reading the text to me and it's like peter bromka has sent you an image to you and matt chittam and and then it starts reading the text and it's like, this is why people go crazy over Boston. Look at this. And I'm like, I can't see it. Well, I, I guess I probably could have from my watch, but I'm like, I'm in the middle of a run. I'm not going to look at that. So I'm like, who knows, who knows what the weather's going to be, but I have a feeling it'll change a bunch between now and then. So I'm not going to worry about it yet. Maybe I'll look at it later. Um, and Martha says, it's rabbit. You're doing the shakeout with in Boston. I was way, get, way off guessing, believe in the run. Yes. So uh, I'm guessing something went out today because uh, if you know Martha, um, but, or maybe they just let the rad rabbits know, but yeah. So the Boston shakeout is going to be 9 a.m. on Saturday with rabbit at their pop-up store. Um, that's going to be starting at nine o'clock. We'll do a run. We're still figuring out the route. They were like, do you have a route that you like? I'm like, I, I, if you guys have a route that you like, I'll go with that. You don't want me picking the route if you can help it. Um, so we'll do a, we'll pick it, we'll find a nice route. Um, Cause I think that they've had shakeouts from that store before. And I was like, you know, I kind of know the area, but like I have a feeling that things are just different on marathon weekend. So if you have a route that has worked for you guys, I'm, I'm happy to use that one. Um, and then there'll be lots of fun stuff um, at the store that you can get customized. You can buy, there'll be some giveaways. So you want to make sure you get there early. Um, and then I don't know if there's an RSVP or not yet. I still have to look through a little bit more of that. We'll be putting together some stuff for more of a fun social announcement um, for later this week. But yeah, so hopefully you guys have been listening and penciling and saving that uh, Sunday at 9 a.m. Did I say Saturday? I meant Sunday. Sunday, 9 a.m. time slot. So hopefully I'll see you guys there. I know there's there's a lot of other stuff going on at the same time. Um. And I, so I understand if you can't make it, that's totally cool. But, um, yeah. Mm, yeah, Martha says the shakeout and the rest of the schedule did go out to everyone this morning, but there's also a special one-hour event for Rad and Elite Rabbits, which I'm excited about, to meet others. Well, that's very cool. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, so that'll be it. So that, that's fun. Um, I got to finalize. I'm doing another shakeout run the day before. I got to finalize details on that. And then... Uh, I don't know. There'll be another event that I'm doing Saturday evening. The time on that has been finalized to 6 p.m. It's not a running related one. The other one is going to be running at 2 if you want to run in the afternoon. 2 o'clock running, 6 o'clock seated, I guess. You know, so uh, lots of opportunities to come hang out. And there's going to be a lot of other fun stuff. I just saw Tommy put out something that he's going to be doing uh, with um, Allison Mariella Desir which I think is super cool. Um, Stephanie Flippin is doing something with um, The Mernivator. I just finished reading her book last week, by the way. So it's good timing. Um, and Carolyn Sue um, over at Lululemon. So yeah, so lots of cool stuff that's going to be happening and going on. Um, I know Lindsay Hines got some stuff. I'm trying to put together some content for Relay to kind of be like, what are all the events that everyone's at? I think I got an email from tracksmith over the weekend too for stuff that they're doing i don't know if i'm i'll definitely stop by at some point over the weekend well hopefully um because i think everything's close together so i think i'll be able to do all that but um yeah it's gonna be wild i'm i can't wait i can't wait martha says i have to start a, a schedule for all the things going on in boston yeah so that's what i'm trying to put together too um for everyone to try and kind of figure it out um uh, jj and sienna says watch the video earlier were you wearing the novas during your shakeout runs i was wearing the nova last three trail so i got that a while ago and um 
like I just don't I I I ran like 170 miles in the Noblesse three, and so I'm like uh, the Noblesse three trail is fun. I like it a lot, but it's not different enough for me to like really justify logging a bunch of miles in from like a reviews perspective. But I was like, oh, for this ASICS trip, I think that'll work. I brought the Nimbus 25 with me to Tokyo. No one sent me the Cumulus 25 yet. It's like, what shoe should I run in? You know, I I brought the Magic Speed 2 to Eugene. So I'm like, what 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 should I get out there? So yeah. So that's what so that's why I ended up with the No Blast 3 Trail. And I think it was a great choice because it was super rainy basically almost every time I wanted to run anywhere. So like, you know, nice good traction and tread. Steven C wants to know if I'm going to go at bowling with Ed Bud. Well, here's here's the thing. Uh, where Ed Bud is going to be is a little bit further away from like where, because he's over, he, I think he's staying over by the Puma HQ, which is not by like where the finish line is. I don't, I, I mean, I presumably though, like there's, I think there's a Puma pop-up. I think that's what I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that's going to be the case. And so I don't think that there's a bowling alley by the where that's going to be. So, uh, bowling might be a little bit tougher to manage. Although, where where did we go? There is a bowling alley. Oh, there's there's definitely bowling. So when we, last time we were up in Boston for Falmouth, there is a place that we went to. I'm pretty sure they had bowling, but they had yeah yeah they had bowling. It was like an arcade. It was a bar and all sort. It had all, all all sorts of stuff. And maybe we could. What do they call it? Uh, throw. It's not throw a couple balls. It's uh, play a few frames. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Maybe we could do that. Maybe we get that set up. <laughs> uh, Calvin Hong says, uh, serious, to quote serious runner, Boston is my shakeout run because I'm always looking ahead to, to my biggest race, my next one. <laughs> uh, Matt Legrand here says, yo, Co, what's going on? Glad you had a good time at the CB10. Yeah, it's a fun race. Uh, it's a it's a really fun race to do. Uh, I'm very lucky that I get to do it. I know it's hard to get into. There's a lottery for it and everything. Um, so it's been it's a, it's been a real pleasure to be able to run it two years in a row, um, even when weather conditions aren't the best. At least it wasn't raining. If it was raining and we had all that, ugh, that would have been that would have been really hard. Um, yeah, I don't know that I would have enjoyed it nearly as much as I did. But I had a really good time running that event. There's just so many fast people that go to that i mean there, it's a twenty thousand person race so there's people of all different abilities but like if you're going there and like you're like i don't know how to run a 10 mile race who am i gonna run with there's gonna be people for you to run with you know so it's like it's a lot of fun uh jewel says ran my first 50 mile race this weekend in california and finished 19th overall at 1842 well congratulations that's a nice pr there for you i don't know i've not done a 50 mile race i'd like to try one sometime Mm, Sean Doolin says spin a few frames. I don't think it's spin. Is it spin a few frames? That doesn't sound right. Mm, and Joe Guhit says, we be reading any Pumas in the near future? The DN2, the DV at Nitro 2, uh, is it? It might be in one of these boxes, I think. If it it might be this one. I'm not sure. But they um they <laughs> They sent me an email and they were like, we saw in the comments that someone that no one has sent you the DVA nature to you. We're really sorry about that. We're sending you one. <laughs> so uh, it's a good thing you guys brought it up in the, in a comment because I did the forever run nitro recently. Um, well, that would have been a good shoot to run in today too. Um, but like, yeah, so then, so that, that one is coming, but on, on that note, let's start, let's start, um, let's start looking at some of these packages. So this first one, um, yeah, so there will be some Puma reviews coming soon. Let's talk about that. Um, let's get into it. I have so many packages because I was gone for not only the DC trip, but also um, since I was gone for a couple of days for spring break too. All right, first one is from Buff. Whew, this is a very colorful hat. I like these colors, and I like this, like, it's like a little... It's like maybe like rubber or plastic blue thing. It's stitched. It says buff on it. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. A little five panel cap. I can't put it on top of my headphones, but this is nice. It's um, it's very lightweight. I feel like it's going to dry really quickly, but I have some buff hats that are just like, 
it's like you took a t-shirt or like a technical shirt and like cut it in the shape of a hat and it's super super floppy i can't wear that one this one the brim has like a little bit more structure still pretty floppy and good for washing it a bunch of times so i think this one would get some decent use and then the other things that i asked them to send me were uh like these head things like uh, you know like junk bands they make those head things and they're like tapered in the back so that way it sits on your head properly um they sent me two of these these are cool net uv ellipse so that way i can wear them when it's like hot out you know since i got the long hair if i wear my hair up in a bun then i could wear i can run around like this so i've been using a lot of stuff like this lately um as i run when i put the head up they only show a woman in the thing here but that's okay guys can rock it too focus see that like right here those are women but guys can do it too all right that's it from buff Momentum Unbound says, nothing sits on my head properly. Even my hair is questionable. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have a lot. I mean, some some hats just do not sit on, on me properly. And I have a hard time with it. Like a lot of the Asics hats I have a really hard time with. That's why the one hat that I wear all the time, it's like all tattered and torn up because that's like the one that I like to wear if I have to wear an Asics hat. Not usually my favorite ones. Uh, but it just comes down to, I think I just have an odd shaped head. Um, like a medium, everything else, but I'm like a large or extra large when it comes to helmets. I just got a misshapen head, you know? Adam says, I generally don't like wearing hats. This hot head gets too hot. I prefer a visor. Adam, I ran into a friend uh, that we ran with when I was up there in Boulder. I'm walking around by like the starting line before the race. Um, and I forgot his name already, but um, we ran together and then we had dinner at the pizza place the boulder style pizza place where they put honey on the crust. Remember that? Um, so I, I talked to him and I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I'm just running. And I was like, okay, awesome. I mean, he's like in town for the race. And I was like, well, what, what do you think? I was, I couldn't figure out where to stand. Cause there was like, I couldn't see anyone with like the pace flag. And I was like, what do you think about running today? He's like, you know, 60, 62, something like that. I'm like, Oh, okay. never mind. I'll go stand up way behind you then. <laughs> Uh, Sober Gummy says, I was cheering for you at the Northeast Track Club section of the Cherry Blossom. The elite women's finish was absolutely electric. Nell and Sarah battling it out. Yeah, that's awesome. I wish I could have seen it. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see it. I did get a uh, chance to talk to Sarah Hall after the race um, at that A6 party. Um, she came by for a little while. Ryan Hall also came by, and she also brought the kids too. So it was like, and they all sat down. There was lots of food at this event. So they came down and, and chatted for a bit. And she took some pictures with people. So it was really cool. It was, it was really fun. Yeah, Mike says, I heard you ran. Hey, it was Mike. He's like, I heard you ran to Mike Kisby. Yeah, that was it. It was, it was, it was like, whoa. You know, like sometimes I recognize people and I don't know where I'm from. I'm like, Boulder. We ran all the way up that hill together. That giant uphill route that one day. <laughs> um. All right. Post call with Paul says, do those headbands help with keep sweat out of the eye? Um. Not, not, I don't really have too much of a sweat in the eye problem. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask. They do get soaked by the time I'm like done with the run in the summer. But mainly what I like for them is they keep some of these short, like, you know, there's always wispies. So like when I have the hair up, you know, like there's a lot of flyaways that happen and they kind of keep the flyaways under control. So I, I do like that. Mm, all right. <laughs> go. if you just lean forward your massive head you probably run sub four minute miles on the downhills first 10k of boston is downhill right that's possible i haven't tried that yet maybe i need to lean forward even more i'll try it i'll go for it uh charles washington said random question did they give up medals for finishing the cherry blossom race you have to you have to request it i don't know if it costs money too but like uh this is a race where you have check a box if you want a medal and you check a box if you want a shirt i don't usually like medals or shirts so i don't check the boxes for those so i don't get any but um the medals this year were nice though and i regretted not getting one because they were very pretty because it was the 50th running of the cherry blossom 10 mile run which used to be called the cherry blossom 10 mile invitational um i learned that at the starting line but uh yeah so like 
it was a cherry blossom with 50 little like stars inside it. I don't know if they were stars or mini cherry blossoms or just nubs, but it was like a cherry blossom with lots of little 50 different kind of things on the inside. And it was really, it was really nice. It looked good. Same with the shirt at the similar design. I'm like, Oh, maybe I should have got a shirt. That's kind of nice. Um, Caesar Zogby says, are you going to the Adazura road to records in Germany? Um, that's in, I think that's in like two weeks. Um, it's the, I think it's the week after London. When I was in Nuremberg, everyone was like, oh, so you're going to be back for a road to records? And I was like, no. And they're like, oh, I was like, because no one's asked me, um, you know, no, I, I, I'd love to be invited. And they were like, oh, okay. And then I haven't been invited, but that's okay. I think because it's, I mean, I don't like not everyone that I met at Adidas has like control over that. You know, there's probably one or two people that I, and I, I th the thing is, I do think I met that guy, but anyway, like I'm not, I haven't been in, asked to go there and I don't think it's something that you can just show up to. Although I think you could, it's a mass participation 5k later. Right. So I guess I could just sign up for that and go, but uh, I don't know that I would do that. So, yeah. Mm. Charles Washington says, just found your channel. I started running after weightlifting for about a decade. Nervous as hell. Well, you're in the right spot. You know, um, Chris Chung, who I ran with, also does a lot of lifting and running as well. Um, and Drew Whitcomb over at Wear Testers does a lot of reviews with like people that are coming from other sports, a lot of ball sports, a lot of weightlifting, gym type sports. So um, all some other good uh, resources for you, but welcome. And Bernard Alcohol says, how many miles would be comfortable running in the Takumi Sen 8? I did a four mile race in them this weekend. I was too hesitant to use them for my extended long cool down. Um, I mean, if you had another shoe, you know, to cool down in, I think that's a great idea. Cause you're not, you know, then you're like, those are miles that are not really using the shoe to its full potential. Um, but I want to say like my longest run in them is probably like 14, maybe 16 miles. Dep like I'll do my marathon workouts in them and it's fine for that. Um, cause those, there's like a long warm up, some miles at marathon effort, some recoveries and a long cool down and it's fine. It's fine for that. You know, would I want to race like a half marathon in it? I'm not sure about that. That's a little bit different. You know what I mean? The forces are just a little bit different. And Adam says, is a Hyperion Max basically the elite without a plate and vice versa? Not really. Because of the Hyperion Elite, the shaping of the shoe, it's so wide. Although the Hyperion Max did get a lot, I feel like it's a lot wider than the regular Hyperion. Um, I feel like the rocker to me feels very different, but you know what? It's been a long time since I ran in the Hyperion Elite, and I don't have one on hand to compare it to. So I'm not, you know what? I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I will tell you, though, that I find the Hyperion Max to be a little bit more exciting than the Hyperion Elite. I feel like the plate in there, and I don't know if like it's a pre prior generation of you know, DNA flash, it just feels a little bit firmer to me than the Hyperion Max. The Hyperion Max feels like there's like a little, I don't, I don't know if it's like dual density or what, but like there's part of it that just feels a little bit softer that I find more enjoyable overall. All right, let's get to the next box. Um, oh, I don't know what this one is. This one, I think this one came from International because this one is like a DHL. I'm trying to think. Uh, it's from someone who I've gotten packages before because I recognize the sender, but it's like the sender doesn't say like, you know, brand name on it. And it is, oh, Soar. Soar sent me more stuff. You know, I have a, a lot of brands have started doing this where that looks like you've gotten like correspondence from them, but it's just like the packing slip. Yeah, just a packing slip. All right. Do you think they've sent more cam camo? <laughs> Yeah, you know, as much as like I've been kind of teasing that water camo, I do like the water camo. Like the the apparel is nice. All right, we got ooh a rain. This is like a rain jacket. So I have this in like a kind of like a stretchier material, um, as like a quarter zip. But this is like a rain. This is like a jacket. No hood. 
This looks nice. I don't know if it's going to be waterproof, but it feels like water repellent. You can hear it. All right. Hmm. This is called the men's ultra jacket. It feels very lightweight, very thin. It's got pat pocket in the back, SOAR logo on the back, and then also on the left shoulder. I don't know, sometimes, I feel like, I like the SOAR logo when it's small like this, but when it's big, I feel like these rounded corners don't translate as well. Does anyone think that? I feel like these corners should be sharper, but when they make the logo bigger, it just doesn't feel right. I don't know. Just a little nuance. I normally like rounded corners. That's the thing. But Ooh, this one is the rain jacket. That one might have just been a wind layer. This is a rain jacket. It feels like a rain jacket. And it's got the scuba hood, which I love this shape of hood, especially like the neck part right here. Green. This is really, really green. Even I could tell this is green. It's got cinchy things at the bottom to keep uh, everything nice and snug. Zipper pocket in the back again, but no big SOAR logo on this side. There's not a lot of SOAR logos on this thing at all. Just says SOAR on the bottom, but whew, this would have been nice to have over the weekend because it rained a ton. Yeah. Shannon says, I love that color. Is this just, is this green? Is this just regular green or is this like a minty green? I mean, mint is green, right? Yeah, I don't know. Martha says mint green, so maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, dad runner out, Gumby. It's like a Gumby color. It is. That's it. Dwayne Scott says not Gumby. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. But this is, this is a good, this is, this will get a lot of use. It's nice. Mm, oh. Joe Ho says, Ed Bud has the sword jacket on in light gray in today's video. Oh, nice. JJ and Sienna says, sounds like you don't like that. No, it's not that I don't like it. It's just like, I don't know. There's just something that seems a little bit I'm like the, the logo. It always catches my eye funny every time I see it when it's the bigger version of the sword, like hash. I can't put my finger on it, but like something, it's like, it needs like one more edit to make it right. I, I don't know. Maybe they need to make it slightly different when it's bigger. I don't know. Mm. All right. Let's get to the next box. This one is shoes. Uh, Who's it from? Oh, this is not Pumas. I'll show this to you guys. Um, I think that you, I think you guys will like it. Um, I don't know if this is controversial. You know, I've never been to Boston before, so like maybe I'm breaking protocol here. But I decided that I would get myself a couple of things because um, I wasn't going to go shopping at like the expo. I didn't want to do that, so I did buy myself the celebration jacket. The blue one. You know, I won't wear it till I actually run it. You know, don't worry, guys. Are people going to wear this beforehand? I mean, maybe if I had run other Boston marathons before, I might wear it before. But I'm not going to wear this until I actually run the race. But I bought myself the jacket. Um, and then I also, you know, I love a good knit hat. So I bought myself this, too. Because I feel like I'm not, you know, probably outside of this weekend, I'll wear that celebration jacket, like, at the airport on the way home and stuff. And after that, it's probably just going to sit in my closet. I don't know that I'll wear it anywhere. It just seems like like an ostentatious flex. You know, I guess all flexes are ostentatious, but I don't know. But this I could see myself wearing to a lot of runs and stuff and just kind of be like my quiet flex. You know? <laughs> Running with Oliver says, use this celebration jacket as my throwaway layer. <laughs> that, <laughs> that'll get you DQ'd. That'll get you disqualified. Thou shalt not disparage the celebration jacket, you know. So hey. <laughs> dad or says wear it on the on the plane on the plane too there i'll wear it on the plane back that's it i'll wear it. that's about you know it'll get like a day of wear you know 
Eliza says the hate for the celebration jacket is wild. You know, I, as someone who hasn't run Boston before and probably will only run one, uh, I want. I wish it were just the regular blue. I just want the same. I want the jacket that everyone else has. You know, but you know, this is the year that I ran it, so this is the one that I get. Sean Dunn says it's controversial. Is it controversial to buy it ahead of time? Should I not have bought it? Ahead? Is that bad luck or something? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Adam says Stephen Gnoza would be seriously hurt if I wore it before. <laughs> I'll just wear. But I can wear it to the expo because, far as anyone else knows, I just bought it like that moment. You know. <laughs> Uh, Frank says, "Why don't they make the hoodie for men? The hoodie was the only Adidas Boston thing I like. That hoodie, I, I agree with you. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you could pull off a, a woman's hoodie. I probably could. Uh, I was thinking about getting it, but I decided to get the beanie and the, just a regular jacket instead. You know." Drew says, "What color is a hat? It's like a canvasy color." You know, I thought it was more of a cream when I saw it online, but like in person, it looks more tannish to me. Um, yeah. So like it, the, I think the even the colors that you guys are seeing it when I'm showing you guys a hat make it seem a little bit more washed out than it is. But this is more of like a uh, bur, burlap. Burlap is what I would call it. If we're going to get very specific with the colors. Uh, maybe it's not as brown as burlap. Tan light tan can't i can't no not canvas i don't know it's not white it's not cream it's darker than that so but go running with offices you got to wear the jacket to the kids cross-country parent meeting should i wear it to the track meet today my daughter has her first track meet today if she has it though with the weather i don't think she'll have it should i wear should i wear the 2023 boston celebration jacket to a, a track meet two weeks before in boston <laughs> oh my goodness I'll, I'll, I'll. Not only would I get banned from Boston, I'll get banned from all the other, of all, from all the other track meets. <laughs> you guys are gonna get me in trouble. Adam says you're only gonna run bo one Boston. Didn't you say that for your first marathon? Yeah, yeah, I did say that for my first marathon. I said that I was done, and I was, I was right on that for six years. I was right. I didn't run another marathon. Seven years almost. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I mean, Bo Boston, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what hap what ends up happening with the race, but like, um, you know, New York, I ran it. I had a good time. Um, I enjoy spectating New York a lot. Um, and so I'm not sure that I need to go like run that race that many more times. I enjoy, I'm getting to that point with Chicago where I'm like, should I chase the pros around the town one year? But I'm like, I do enjoy just running it every year. It's my local race. So, you know, we'll see. I, I just don't, I don't think I need to run Boston a bunch of times. You know, one is great. One will be enough. Uh, Dario says, my ugliest celebration jacket is from 2018. But every time I see it on someone, I know that what terrible race conditions they had to endure. Which, which one was the 2018? I'm going to have to look that up, one up real quick. Uh, Boston Marathon Jacket. Um, let's see if I can find it. Oh, that that's the red one? The red one that year? Oh yeah, I, yeah that that was that was a surprise color. I'm like, I don't, uh, but then what what year was it? Martha, I, th I think I've seen Martha wear it. It's like the red, white, and not red, white, and blue, but it's like red, white, and navy almost. Those are good colors. That's good color work, and I think the red one is good color work. It's just like, I don't know. Should they mess around with the Boston celebration jacket? I think that they should just make two every year. One is going to always be the same. The only thing that changes is the number. And then the uh, maybe the fit a little bit, maybe some materials, but it should be the same like jacket, you know? And then I think if they want to play around with others, get others. You know what I mean? That's, that's my personal opinion on it. They can sell it. They can move enough units, you know? All right. Eliza, this is what I'm thinking. Buying it ahead of time is okay. Just wear it after you finish running it. That, that's kind of my plan. And Shannon says, I bought it ahead to make sure they have my size. The line at the expo is nuts. Yeah, I I, I don't plan on spending a lot of time at the expo. Just because, like, 
I don't like it when I see Boston Marathon jackets at any other race. If I go to a race where it's all Boston Marathon jackets, I'm going to be like, get me out of here, please. So I don't know. I just, there's a lot of nerve. I'm very susceptible to like other people's nervous energy, you know? Yeah. Dario says, you know, many people buy it ahead of time and wear it before the race. It's not a finisher's shirt. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, that's why I'm like, it's okay to buy it. No, I mean, they sell it before, you know what I mean? So like, I can, I can wear it. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Tony says the red, white, and blue was a virtual year, wasn't it? I think it, well, it wasn't initially supposed to be for a virtual year. And then it ended up being the virtual year. Yeah. I think so. Mm. Martha says, Co and everyone, you will see a sea of Boston jackets all over town before the race and after the race. They'll just be moving slower the day after. Yeah, that'll be fun. All right, let's get to the next one. The next two are, I've already opened and I've looked at it because um, I, I, I don't know why. Why couldn't I wait? Oh, because it was a big box and I just had to make sure I didn't know who it was from right away. But this next one, this will be the next Solomon review. I'm not, it's not going to be right away, but we'll get to it soon. Is the Glidemax Trail. I've already got a nice collab. I think I feel like all my trail shoe reviews from now on, I want to do a collab with it, um, with someone else that runs different trails than I do. I think that's been fun for me. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. I already have the collab person in mind. I'll leave it a surprise for now. But this is the next trail shoe that I'll be reviewing, which is the Solomon Glidemax Trail. I'd like the Aeroglide a lot. I think this one's taller, maybe just because of the lugs. Um, I've never tried the Ultra Glide. Is that the other one that they have? But I think this is going to be even bigger and cushier than the Ultra Glide. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I really like the colors on this one too. I like that black Papa Orange. It's really nice. And then they. I, I only asked them to send me the Ultra Glide, the, what is it, Max? I only asked them to send me the Glide Max. Well, they asked me if they could send the Glide Max Trail. And I was like, yes, that sounds great. I'm very interested in it. And then they also put another shoe in the box. And I'm not, I'm not sure about this one. This one is the Pulsar Trail 2 Pro. Now, one of the, we were just talking about, how I don't, I want to do collabs with all my trail running shoe reviews. It's because I'm not that good at trail shoes. So I need help. <laughs> you know what I mean? So calling for reinforcements, phone a friend. And so, um, you know, a shoe, a trail shoe with the word pro in it, not necessarily for me. Um, and it's another shoe uh, with their speed lace system. But this one has a very little garage, but like a knit upper. So I kind of like really like all this it looks great but i just feel like it's going to be really aggressive like i ran i ran in this is the this is the road version of it version one they're on version two of this one but like i ran in the road version of this one this was a nice shoe it reminded me of like the zoom fly sp but a little bit on the firmer side than what i tend to like these days and i already feel like solomon trail shoes are a little bit on the firm side for me um, I have a feeling this is going to be like a lot of the things that I don't want in a trail shoe. So I'm very nervous about it, but we'll give it a shot. I got some, I got a lot of summer trail running planned. So like I'll have opportunities for it, but just, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I think they sent the shoe to the wrong person. Momentum Unbound says um, that shoe looks very, that looks heavy for some reason. It is, I mean, trail shoes are heavier, but this one does feel like a little bit weighty. But so did the road version as well. Although the road version felt lighter than it looked, this one feels heavier than it looks. So like it's, it's not a light shoe, but I'll, I'll, I will do my best to find the appropriate type of terrain and intensity to run with these in. There might be a lot of falling down on my side, but I'll try. I'm going to give it a try. We'll see. Uh, Tony Messi says the SI Pulsar is my favorite, is my top trail shoe right now. Loving it. The Pro is less aggressive. Oh, is a less aggressive version? Oh, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay. Oh, so the S Lab Pulsar and then the what is this called? 
Pulsar Pro. Pulsar Trail 2 Pro. Okay, so that's less aggressive. Oh, so they've got... So I feel like they've got... They've got a level above Pro then. Okay. That's good to know. All right, all right. Now, that, then I'm not as... Then I'm a little bit less intimidated by it. I'm just... Hey, I'm just, mainly I'm just intimidated by it. Drew says, I, I've got both those Solomons, but haven't had time to test because of marathon training focus. All of trails have so much vert, it's hard to work it into training. Yeah, you know what? I mean, maybe we need, maybe we need to, we should figure out a trip. Mm, maybe that's what we do. Let's do some uh, Atlanta trail running. Let's do, should we do that, Drew? Maybe we'll do that. Maybe I can get out there for Peachtree. I talked to a lot of people this over the weekend that were like, come to Atlanta for Peachtree. I had like that conversation like four times with different people that were in town for the cherry blossom from Atlanta that are like, you're going to, when are you going to come down to Atlanta? So I'm going to try to make it happen. I still, I got a project. Number one is Boulder. I got to hurry up on that though. Cause I feel like time's running out. Right. Hopefully there's still spots that I can sign up. Mm. Yeah. Sober Gummy says they got a name and convention, convention issue. If pro is not at the top. Wayne, what does pro mean anymore? Nataku says, all right, Co, I'm in Schaumburg. I know you're hearing this loud rain right now. Yikes. I can hear it. I, I mean, I'm in, a, I'm in a basement and I could still hear it. But yeah, it's coming down. So far, we still have power, though. So we're good. Drew says he's in. All right. So, all right. Here's what I'll do. If... All right, this week I probably, mm, maybe this week's not a good week. Next week's probably not a good week after Boston. I got to hurry up though, but after Boston, it's like end of April. But I got to have a conversation with my wife if we got to make this Boulder trip happen for Boulder, Boulder. If she says no, I'll right away say, well, what about 4th of July then? So that's what that'll be the plan. Uh, Scott says, do you run differently when you're testing different shoes? Uh, a little bit. I tried to run for what the shoe was intended for, right? Because I feel like it's an unfair review to be like, you know, I tested this, uh, you know, like the Adidas Prime X on, uh, you know, some park trails, some grassy stuff. And I didn't like it. It was too unstable. That doesn't make a lot of sense, you know? So I try to figure out what the shoe is about um, based on what it's being marketed and positioned as. And I try it that way. If I don't like it that way, I try to figure out, well, what do I like this shoe for? And if I don't like it for what it's intended and I can't figure out what I like it for, then I would say it's not a great shoe. But usually um, between what it's intended to be or like, huh, just let me take a look at this aside from what they think it should be and what do I like it for. Between one of those two, I can find some something nice to say. I like to try to find nice things to say about shoes. You know. Frank says, you know, in terms of pro, the Endorphin Elite is above pro, which is confusing everyone. Um, but that's also the same company that is making the Kinvara Pro to be a daily trainer to take pressure off the Endorphin Speed. So it's like, I don't know. They're just throwing labels on stuff. I think they should have called it the Kinvara Max or the Kinvara Plus because, and I don't, here, here's what, here, here's the thing about Saucony, right? So, Saucony going into TRE, they paid money for the back cover of like the the big, there was like a big magazine that goes out to get everyone ready for TRE. Like who's going to be there? Who do you want to talk to? They have like a best running shoe store of the year competition or they do profiles of all those stores. So there's like, it's a big magazine, glossy, really well produced. Back cover was for a shoe called the Triumph 20 plus. Not just the Triumph 20, but a Triumph 20 like, plus like an extra tall triumph um and i go to the sockney booth i'm like what about the triumph they're like they go through the whole thing and i'm like any other questions i'm like what about the triumph 20 plus they're like uh, we decided that we're going to put a pause on that you know we were excited about it enough that we thought we would you know we wanted to make an ad about it but we're we're um reconfigured we're still working on it and i was like okay but, at the, but what it tells me is at the same time that they were thinking about this Kinvara Pro and also had production models of the Endorphin Elite in hand, um, they now have 
one shoe that's above the pro, the endorphin that they're using as elite. So like next level above whatever level it is, is elite. Okay. But then the Kinvara, is it Kinvara elite? No, that's Kinvara pro. Okay. Triumph. What's one level above a triumph? Triumph pro? Nope. Triumph plus. So like, what the heck? I feel like they were just like, ha, put a bunch of superlatives in a hat and pick one out. I just, I couldn't, I could not figure it out for the life of me. <laughs> uh. Scott says, is this more microwave coffee? No, this is just, this is a, I just, a fresh K cup. I, I, you know, I had a conversation with Thomas about it. I know, I know K cups are bad for the environment. I just like them. So, but I have been trying to do more of the coffee press. You know, it's cheaper per cup, there's less waste, you know, but. It's more work. It takes longer, you know, but um, I don't always prefer it. Maybe it's because I'm not brewing the coffee press correctly. Um, but, you know, I've tried them. Uh, I like AeroPress coffee. I think I like AeroPress coffee more than coffee press. I need to bust out the AeroPress again, maybe, I think. All right. Uh... Lou Boy says, Carl, are you planning on running other Chicago races before the Chicago Marathon? Uh, I don't think so. My running buddy and I talked about doing a race, uh, uh, trying to find like a trail race to do in the area. I mean, but trail is just in one of the parks in the area. Um, but that's up to him if he wants to do one. Uh, that would be in June, I think. Or maybe, you know, I think June. But other than that, no. I, I, I may or may not do the half marathon. I'm not sure. Um, it's a it's a big race. Everyone comes out for it, but like the course isn't my favorite. You just spend a lot of time on a not that great part of Lakeshore Drive. You're just running on super hard pavement, and there's no tree cover, and it's just not not my favorite. All right, let's get to the last package. I'm I'm actually really intrigued about this one. Very. Um, not something I would normally get, but Thomas insisted that I ask um, the brand to send me one of these. I mean, I guess I could have just bought it on my own, but um, I was just like, you know, asking for shoes is a nice way to kind of touch base with the brands that I want to work with and make sure that I'm not going like radio silent for too long. Maintaining the open lines of communication, I think is valuable. So I reached out and I was like, Sorry to bug you about this shoe, but can you send me one of these? And so they did. This is the Fuel Cell Propel 4. Which normally I don't review the Propel. It's a $110 shoe. I don't usually review budget shoes. But Thomas was like, you got to review this one. It's Fuel Cell Foam. I'm pretty sure it's Fuel Cell. Yeah, it says Fuel Cell right on the side. Fuel Cell Foam. I don't think it has a plate, but there's something stiffer in here. And it's 110 bucks. He's like, it's a $110 shoe that doesn't run like a $110 shoe. You got to try it. You're going to like it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to trust you on this one. So we're going to try it. Pork and Bean says, I've been waiting for you to get this one. Okay. And Elijah says, the colorway matches the Boston. This matches the Boston jacket? This is gray, right? Am I wrong? This, I think this is gray. The colorway says it's gray black. Yeah. Okay. Drew says it's a TPU plate. He just got his too. All right. We're going to have to trade notes maybe. Scott Hilton says it's a plastic plate. Martha wants to know, is it a speedboard? <laughs> um, and uh, she's joking. She says, and then C-Town Van says 110 is budget. It Unfortunately, it is these days. Um, like, what is it? The Revel, Revel from La from Brooks, or is it the launch? That's a hundred bucks, or maybe it's a hundred ten now. And the Propel, um, then like the Windflow are in the one ten range. It used to be that one twenty was kind of like the cost for daily trainers. Then everything got to one thirty, and then now we're at basically at like one forty. And then like nicer than daily trainers, which there really wasn't a lot of before, is like one sixty to one eighty. And then you've got you know, workout shoes at 200, race shoes start at 200 to 250. 
prices are going up. But at the same time, though, this doesn't feel or look like a $110 shoe. So I'm excited about it. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll, um, will it compete with the Cloud Surfer? I don't know. I'm not, I don't really know what else to expect um, from this shoe. It feels a little bit on the heavy side, like holding it. So I'm a little bit concerned about the weight, but you know, like how much, how much like leeway do you give a shoe that's cheaper? I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, Scott says, I'm going to wait on the Propel Pro Plus Pro. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I says, do you have to drink Propel water with it? Yeah, uh, they're on version four. When did Propel water come out? Is Propel a Gatorade product? It's a Gatorade product, right? I wonder when that, um, I wonder when that comes out, when that came out, which one was first? Because uh, I'm sure like both companies would have run um, trademark checks on those. But I don't know. CV76 mm -hmm. says, annually, how much do you spend on running shoes? Mm, well, that Nike video that I did cost me like $600. Um, all the Nike shoes I have to buy myself, most of the Adidas shoes I have to buy myself. Um... I don't think I've paid for any ASICs shoes in a long time or Hoka shoes. So it's been a while on those. Um, New Balance, I buy maybe half of them myself. Um, so annually, I don't know, probably like three to $4,000 is probably it. That's just a rough guess. I still haven't finished my taxes. So I can maybe give you a better answer later. Um, but I'm trying to think. I actually don't think that I break out my accounting that precisely i just don't care i mean i care but like for accounting purposes for tax purposes i don't need to do that so frank says does the shoe budget make it worth itemizing the taxes um so like i i let my accountant figure all that out she she does it but like i do keep track of all the expenses for the business so i still it, it's this is Run I, I do the YouTube stuff as a as a sole proprietorship essentially. Um, so but I still keep I, I'm I'm not as you know I don't keep things as separate as I did when I ran like my other business. Um, but I'm very accustomed to that. So there's you know there's inflows, there's outflows. I keep track of what those are and categorize them very broadly. The more broadly I categorize them, the easier it is for me to keep up with it. And I'm terrible at keeping up with it. I, I feel like my accountant's going to retire relatively soon. And I feel like one of the reasons she retires when she does is going to be because of me. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Noah Combs says, Kofi, did you talk to Frank from ASICS at the Cherry Blossom Expo? So I'm in your video and I know him personally. Oh, that's nice. Small world. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm, I've, I've run with Frank a couple times. Um, Frank ran with Megan last year. This year, Frank, um, and then Frank and I hung out at the airport. Well, what event was that? Mm, I don't know. There was one time where we both had like a long, like, long layover at the airport or something like that. And we got to hang, hang out all day. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So um, there was just some, uh, there was a lot of personnel switching around. There's just a lot of stuff going on with A6 this week. Uh, they had a big group that they sent out to the Paris Marathon and stuff. Uh, so people were spread all over. And so Frank had to take point in managing all the, you know, the prima donna influencers over the weekend. So he was our point person. He was our handler for the weekend. So, yeah. So, you know, I didn't have to talk to Frank too much this weekend. I try not to bother him too much because I'm like, he's busy. And my goal is to always try to make my, like, make it so that way. If I have to talk to, like, the handler a lot, that means that, like, something went wrong. You know what I mean? It's better, like, if everything just goes smooth and it's like, mm, very little interaction. Not that I don't want interaction. I like hanging out with Frank. But yeah. That's that's funny. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Daniel Emberly says, "Do you still like the Asics Cumulus 24?" I do. I, I know. I know the Asics 20. Well, I presume that an Asics 25 is coming to me relatively soon, and I ended up not running too many miles in mine, so mine are still really fresh looking. So I use it to walk around as my like casual shoe, not my lawn mowing shoe, but it's my casual shoe because it's very comfortable for walking around in. So I've been using it a lot that way lately. Um, so. Shannon says the handlers. You you guys sound like wild animals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are. I mean, there are point person. You know, I guess uh, is. I mean, I don't. I don't know if they consider us our to be the hand. There are liaison. You <laughs> want to get French, um, but yeah. I I mean, I think that it. Um, I I would like to think that like. I'm pretty easy to work with and that believe in the run is pretty easy to work with. I would imagine that not everyone is like that. That is in kind of this world. There's all kinds of personalities, you know? So yeah. Life of Love wants to know if, if I'm going to hang out with uh, Ed in Boston. I hope so. Um, yeah. I think there's a couple of spots where, we might overlap in terms of events we're going to be at, but I don't know. Hopefully I'll be able to see him there. I mean, it'd be a shame for him to fall this way and then I don't get to run it. If we're in the same city too, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Noah says, yeah, nice. Frank is awesome. I ran with him in high school. Oh, very cool. I mean, you must be f fast too. Cause Frank is so fast. Frank last year, Megan wanted to run a 60 minute, 10 mile. And Frank was like, yeah, I haven't been training, but I think I could pace you. <laughs> and so he went from like, basically whatever his definition of not been training at all, like not really running. He just kind of like rolled out of bed and ran a 60 minute, 10 mile with Megan last year. So, I mean, like he's got some wheels. <laughs> he's got some wheels. Uh mm. Sean says, I wonder if all YouTubers on these trips get along or if there's some difficult ones. We need the dirt kofuzi. You know, I haven't had a problem with anyone that I've worked with on any of these kinds of trips, you know? So, like, I also think that most brands don't do it where they bring in a lot of different, like, influencers at once. You know, ASICS has been unique in that way. Um, and I think that they've been kind of, like, leading the way. I think that they're realizing, oh, if you bring in, like, a team of people, then that works out really well. And like, they're basically creating, creating the collab for us. We just have to be there and film it, you know, kind of thing, but they're creating the experience for us. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So like and everyone that we've brought in, they brought in, I've gotten really along well with, that's how I met Tommy and that's how I met Ashley Mateo. So like, you know, it's a, it's been a really good situation. And so like, I don't, I mean, you know, I, they do other events, too, that I'm not in. And I don't know if it's because, like, I mean, I can't go to all of them, right? That wouldn't be good for them or me. And I think that, like, I don't, I would like to think it's because of, like, oh, we don't think that the person will, will like Kofu. You know what I mean? Like, or there might be, you know, there's no, there hasn't been anything like that as far as I know. So it's been, it's been good. Um, I mean, there's sometimes where, like, there's some people that, like, really, really big event, like, world, world championships, like, everyone was there. So there's some people that don't get along with other people or like they just, their styles are different, you know? So, and that the, you just, it's not like a, a conflict kind of thing. It's just like, well, you just don't do collab things with them. That's all, you know? Uh, Martha says, I've received info about pretty much everybody's Boston activity schedule, except believe in the run. Um, I'll let them talk about what they're going to do. I do know what they're doing. A little bit. Um, and I think you guys have kind of figured out what's going to happen. Some of you guys in the chat here, but um, yeah, they're going to have some, they're going to have some really fun stuff. It is going to conflict with my shakeout run on Sunday though, just to let you guys know that at least a little bit of time. So you're going to have to pick your allegiances and I'll be taking notes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go to whichever one you want. It's a lot of fun, especially if you've seen me late recently, um, then, you know, go to one and go to the other. You know, you know, there's definitely no like hard feelings either way, you know. Mm 
governing with all of says all the YouTubers should race each other. Um, you know, like, yeah, I, I've see, here's what, here's where like keeping lines of communication is open, open is useful or potentially useful. I would love to have, so the fifth Avenue mile has like, you know, the, the, there's pros that come down. It's like the end of a lot of the milers like season, you know, um, there's like the regular people that can sign up for the event too. There's also media heats and traditionally it's like, you know, people who used to be Olympians that are now, you know, journalists, um, that are like running it and still running really fast times. But I'm like, they should have like a new media heat. I would love to do that. I would definitely want to do that. The, the problem is it doesn't come at a good time for, for marathon training. I forget when exactly it is, but like I remember last every year it's like, yeah, I'm glad I'm, I'm I would I would do a media mile because you could just run a mile hard and then like do whatever other workout you need to do that weekend. I would totally do it, but it was not an ideal part in, in the schedule when it comes. But like I think that would be one. And you know who the sponsor is of that race? New Balance. So maybe if New Balance is listening, you know, media heat, let's make it happen. That'd be fun. I would love to do that. Mm. Oh, okay. Brian, Brian Tambourine says, believe in the run has Boston scheduled with New Balance and ASICS on their website. Okay. So if they have that, then yeah. So their shakeout run with ASICS is the same time as my shakeout run with, with Rabbit. Same day, same time, Sunday at nine. So, that's what you're gonna have to pick from. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the food situation is gonna be like with rabbit, but they're probably gonna have bagels at theirs. I don't know if we'll, hopefully we'll have bagels too, coffee, some snacks maybe. I don't know. We'll have some very specific Kofuzi rabbit merch, which is gonna be you're gonna you guys are gonna want it. I think you guys are gonna want that. So that'll be fun too. Um. Kevin Bandy says, what's the best shoe to get a running noob into running? I would say like uh, Nova Blast 3, more version 4, Nimbus 25, Rebel 3. There's a lot of there's a lot of good options these days. Um from Saucony, I like the Triumph 20. Those are some good ones. Mm, Calvin says, well, Tracksmith then. You know, I I don't know what Tracksmith is doing. I got an email from someone. Uh, at Tracksmith, but I haven't had a chance to read that email yet. My schedule, because uh, I did move the day, so I will be coming in Friday night. But like my schedule are already pretty, pretty, um, pretty tight. So I'm like, I'm not sure where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm, of course I'm gonna go at some point. But like, I don't know if I'll be able to go for like a scheduled event. You know, I, I mean, I'm not having an event with them. The event that I would want to do with them is the Shakeout Run with Mario Fraioli. I feel like that's gonna be a fun one. Um, I don't know when that is, but I know he's doing one. Oh, I believe he's doing one. He mentioned it. So, yeah. So that'd be a fun one to go and check out. But, you know, I want to get the Tracksmith Banana. Um, I also want to pick up, like, the Boston hoodie. You know, I have the Tokyo one. I have a New York one. I want to get a, you know, I want to get. So those hoodies are nice. The head holes are small, but it's a nice heavyweight hoodie, so I like it. All right. Uh, yeah. The banana with a Tracksmith label instead of a Dole label. You know, I didn't even realize that until like the third or fourth time that I'd seen the Tracksmith bananas that they're not just bananas at Tracksmith. It's a Tracksmith banana. They put a Tracksmith sticker right on the banana. <laughs> and Jay Brothers says, can I get one of the chair, the shakeout shirts? I missed out on the cherry blossom one. I, I'm going to have to tell you, no, I didn't get one. And Thomas didn't get one either. So like, yeah, they went out. They went fast. We had 150 shirts, and they went like crazy. They went crazy quick. So I think they were gone before I even made it back um, to the run. So I did not. I did not get a shirt. So Devin Patterson says, "Is the co merch half tights? No, it's not. It's not that. It's 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 not that good. It's good, but it's not that good. But you know. So um, yeah. All right. Well, I gotta get going, guys. Oh, crew." crud i forgot uh i'm supposed to be somewhere else right now that's why i just got a text um hold on so i gotta get going so sorry about that i just had to text him back um we'll talk more about it tomorrow
Oh, Martha says it says what it actually is on the email. Okay, so you guys got to go check check out the email. Check out the rabbit site. Um, you can see what it is. Martha, maybe you think it's worth it. Hopefully, it's worth it. All right, I gotta get going, guys. Uh, video will come out tomorrow. I'm gonna talk about the. Hopefully, it's tomorrow. We'll see how much we're gonna get done tonight about the Topo Two Cyclone Two. I know you guys have been wanting to know about that, so that'll be the next video. And in the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>